Hi guys, welcome to hashtag Let's Get Awkward. I am your host, Billy No Mates. This episode will look at trans issues, stories, share stories, as well as looking at the bright side of being trans, sometimes the downside. For the first episode, I wanted to start off with my own story. It started off with <clears throat> my friends asking me what was wrong, and I told them that I didn't feel like I was being myself around them. And they said, well, it's okay, you can be yourself around us, it'll all be okay. So, for a while, I was myself, trying to be my genuine self. However, they put me aside again and went, you know, you're pretending to be someone else, we don't like it, who is this person, you need to be yourself. So, I started to be who they wanted me to be. And they were like, oh, this, you see, you're much happier now, this is your genuine self. And it led back to being something wrong and then pulled me aside going, what's wrong again? Which I like to call my circle of hell because <clears throat> that's what it felt like. We started up from A, went from B, C, D and then all the way back to A and still not resolving the problem of what I was, you know, what was causing it. But <clears throat> growing up, I had a lot of voices firing at me in many directions. I had chips. The church, which was a big influence in my life, circled friends and school, teachers who couldn't be bothered to do their jobs when I needed them the most. I was bullied a lot at school and oh, that's a whole different story. My social skills were awkward as hell. I mean, reading f- facial expressions were like a mathematic equation that Stephen Hawkins could do. And I'm just stood there at the side thinking, so what does B mean? You know, what does X mean? And why does Y equal 10? <clears throat> and then I had my circle of friends who picked up on <clears throat> my struggles and my confusions. And they actually found ways to abuse my friendship to them. <clears throat> there were times when I would look at myself and compare myself to my brother. It felt wrong that his chest stayed flat while mine grew. Oh, did they grow my boobs? <clears throat> He grew facial hair while I had none. In the end, I tried to push all this confusion down by trying to be the woman society wanted me to be. Problem was, was what society wanted from me and what the church wanted from me were two different things. The church wanted me to be covered up, show no skin, meaning arms, legs, tops, going up to my neck. Even when I did this, I'll still be promiscuous. I mean, showing any part of my arm was looked at as I was being promiscuous. Um, Being, despite all this, I was still sexually assaulted twice in my life and the church made me feel like it was my fault. Even when there was a married man in the church who wanted to have an affair with me, I did report this to my pastor. And he sat me down and went, well, what did you do to cause this? And I was taken back. What had I done to cause this? I mean, every week, every Sunday I went to church and we I'd have a chat with the guy. Like, I chat with everyone at the church at the end of the service. We'd go into the um, kitchen, make a, drink, make a coffee or a tea, and then we'd sit down and have a chat about the surface. But he always seemed to be focused on looking at areas of my body, which made me uncomfortable. <clears throat> And somehow it was my fault. But trying to be a woman was... It felt like a bad LSD trip. It, and it just wouldn't stop. And <clears throat> I still tried to be a woman. So this meant make, making bad relationship choices, get with men, having sex. And I did eventually end up pregnant, which I'll never regret. I have a beautiful nine-year-old daughter who I love deeply and the church's reaction was well you can guess what the church's reaction was to that they kind of pushed me out <clears throat> made me feel like a leper I couldn't do the things I used to take part in with them this included <clears throat> I was a member of the youth group I did media I was part of the puppet team I just couldn't do that I think my only regret was getting with my fiance well, ex fiance who was great at the beginning <clears throat> he looked after me he 
promised to be a great stepdad because the actual dad had ran off. But as soon as you realise that being a stepdad meant the same responsibilities as an actual dad. He had three kids from a previous relationship. And as soon as I moved in, he seemed to try and breeze through it while I looked after the kids when it was his turn. We we broke up after a huge fight. Well, we broke up then, had a huge fight because the deal was if we ever did split up, I was allowed to stay until I'd found a place, until I could move to another place. <clears throat> and he did try and kick me out of the house while my daughter was asleep in the travel cot. I never really felt so scared in my life because I didn't want to be outside not knowing if I could get back in to get my daughter. <clears throat> Thankfully, a family friend helped me out. She helped me grab my stuff, get my kid and get out of there. And a few days later, I moved to Scotland to be my family. And moving to Scotland, I kind of got to do something that a lot of people do in their teens. They got to explore their identity. I mean, I already knew I had Asperger's, which I do struggle with sometimes. But there was also my sexuality, which I struggled with because I was told God hates gays, lesbians, bisexuals. We never really talked on transgenders, <clears throat> but because it was part, you know, it's part of LGBT, then I thought it was maybe the same way. But I accept, I, I accepted. I was pansexual, but there was still something missing inside of me. You know, something that was still there that needed to be discovered. And in 2015, it hit me like the house from Wizard of Oz. A friend and I had watched The Suffragettes at the cinema. I do recommend watching that movie. It's a powerful, really powerful movie. But it does feel like it's one of those movies you have to watch once. And you can't watch again because it's... It's like the Passion of Christ, really. What you see is horrifying and emotional and it does make you do more than cry. I mean, on the screen I saw people who, well, women, <clears throat> who were willing to give up everything, their homes, their jobs, their children, one last lost her child, just so <clears throat> generations in the future could have the equal right to vote with men and deep down inside I felt I betrayed myself who I was I've been living trying to live something I wasn't so I opened up to my friend and my brother who had accepted it without a thought I was like I'm transgender I'm a man I was meant to be a man and they were like okay sounds weird coming out as a man after watching a movie <clears throat> about women's rights, but it is a part of the movie, as I said. In, it was a bit later, I came out to my parents via email. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the best way, but my parents are both Christians, and I was scared shitless about what they would say. It was about four days later, my mum called in tears, thinking I was thinking she had rejected me as I had not heard from her, and... She told me she loved me always. Being accepted was actually quite amazing. <clears throat> I thought, you know, it'd actually go a different way. And I already knew what my name was going to be. It was always, it was always going to be Billy. Billy was my, Bill is my father's name. I was a Billy No Mates. And my second name I changed to Bernard, which was given to me in my teens by an old friend from my previous church. I mean, every Sunday he'd come up to me, he'd go, hello Bernard, and I'd be like, hi Margaret, how are you? I miss Margaret. <clears throat> he was just a, he was a great man. Close family, they've accepted me for who I am, while others have not. I mean, they still dead name me, no matter what I say. I could say that, you know, my name is Billy, but they'd be like, tell me my name. They would tell me my name like, it's not Billy, it's this. And I'm like, no, my name is Billy. And then if they if I mentioned in comments on Facebook, they would reference me as she or 
my <clears throat> but my dead name which is it's just annoying i mean i've been compared to david williams i'm a lady sketch if you haven't seen it it is david williams he dresses up as a woman in a ugh, it's not really up to date women it's like stylish it's more ugh, Aris, Tudor time, fancy dresses, dumb wig, crap makeup, and he'll go, oh, I'm a lady, <clears throat> and keep insisting it and jumping about the place, making an ass out of himself, which I never liked, so they never really saw it as that, and what hurt most was <clears throat> there is a fan member who really doesn't like me, I mean, people, people are like, oh, she does, she does, and I'm like, no, they, they don't. Because we've had arguments over my sexuality, my choices in life, being a single parent, and my transgender. <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> there was a time when my I got a text from my dad saying that my mum had been sent to hospital, not to worry. And it turned out she had gallstones, and they'd shifted somehow, and it caused a serious infection in another part of the body, which caused really bad health issues and it was a scary time and not long after that <clears throat> I had an argument with this family member because I'd come out as trans on Facebook introducing myself saying hi I'm Billy I will now like to be preferred to as a man you know my pronouns are he and you know him and they let loose on me, having a go at me, saying I'm not this person. I all everything I do was causing so much stress to my mum that it almost killed her. And that really hit a new low for me because <clears throat> I was worried that my mum was going almost died. And that was something I really couldn't handle. I loved my mum to bits and Losing her would be a lot. <clears throat> so, thankfully, my mum, God bless her, she has always had my back. And whenever this family member has given me shit for anything, she has always come up and stopped it and always gave them talking to they deserve and went, look, don't do it. I've had enough. <laughs> I mean, with this... When I told my mum that they were not happy with me being transgender, she went on her Facebook page and saw this post saying, not to be ashamed of who you are and never apologise for it. So mum left a comment on the likes of, <clears throat> you know, you should um, at, practice what you preach. So the family member called her up and was like, what do you mean? Practice what, what you preach, what have I done? And she was like, well, you know what you've done. I've seen the messages you sent Billy and I've had enough of it so don't do it and it stopped thankfully and now we just don't talk mum just was like block them on Facebook don't talk to them <clears throat> and thankfully we don't talk but my name is Billy and it always will be being trans isn't always it's not always easy I mean thankfully I am getting the help I want. I'm going to a gender clinic. I'm looking at surgery for my chest area. I'm looking at hormonal, hormonal treatment. Unfortunately, due to my weight, <clears throat> that can't happen yet. So I need to lose that before I can have it. <clears throat> and But I do have good experiences as well. <clears throat> I went to a transgender weekend last year. And to be surrounded by so many people who were like me, they were loving and accepting of themselves and loving and accepting of, of others, others. I have had a crush in ages and I felt I had a crush on one person, I won't get into that, but it was nice to just be with them for that time, even though I was nervous being around them. I got to explore <clears throat> my creative sides, my poetry writing, which I, <clears throat> if I do get that under control and actually 
have some courage, I will read it during my podcasts. And I just felt like a whole, I, like I said, I felt free. It was amazing. I went skinny dipping, which was freezing. I mean, absolutely freezing. <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, watching, this does another person with me and they just laid flat in the river. And I'm like, how can you do that? I can barely sit in this cold, shivering water. <clears throat> and then there was the karaoke night where I got to belt out everything. I'm not the best singer, was she? I'm the greatest singer at being terrible. I mean, if I could make a lot of money just by sounding really, really bad, I would. I could make Britney Spears look like the best, the greatest singer of all time. So that's how bad I am. And I did that in my underwear, which was funny. I just stripped down to my underwear, grabbed the microphone, and I sang a lot of Sister Sisters, really, because I loved, I loved their album, the first one. And I got other people to sing with me, and it was just an amazing experience. And it was really depressing to have to go back home, but I was also missing my daughter, so three days away was enough for me and it was really nice I really do want to thank them all for letting me go and let me experience it even though I was hard on cash and it was amazing that I managed to get lift there lift back but <clears throat> like I said trying to be your true self is difficult in this world whether you're transgender you're LGBT or just anyone really because there are so many people telling you, I mean, Disney make a lot of money showing you these movies where being yourself is difficult. Because there's always that one aspect or this little something about you that people aren't going to like. Which I've always noticed. But I will wrap it up there. If you want to learn more, more about transgenders or non-binary, you can go to mermaiduk.org.uk. That is mermaiduk.org.uk. Side note, we are not sponsored by them, which I do have to mention. But I do love mermaids. So if you want to want to know or you want to find out how you can support transgenders, non-binary, or tell Liz Truss to just back away and listen to some actual sense, there is a petition online, which I will bring up in a minute. So just hold on for a sec. So the petition says, we understand this from frequent hints that she would like to change the way the NHS treats individuals under 18 years, 18 years of age struggling with dysphoria. We firmly believe that gender reassignment procedures, including the taking of various hormones, is beneficial to the mental and physical health of the individual. Furthermore, it is fundamental neglect of human rights if the UK continues to allow such issues to be handled so carelessly. We need to step up now before the issue is overlooked by the media and her proposals are considered by Parliament this summer. There is only one path towards conquering the transphobic individuals behind this proposal and secure our rights as individuals. We must gather the entire community together to firmly stand against this. I therefore ask all of my fellow countrymen, no matter from what walk of, walk of life, that if you believe in the causes of our community, you sign this petition and forward it to the like-minded people. Help us fight transphobia in the UK. Help us end this bill. <clears throat> so, if you do want to sign it, just go on to change.org and look for Liz Trust threatens the future of transgender individuals. This needs to be stopped. You can also look on Google and if you have transgender friends, I'm sure they'll have it on their Facebook pages. So, I do suggest you sign at the moment, it's at 26,012 signatures, and that's a lot in a few days, because when I signed it, there was under 5,000, which is good. So, <clears throat> that was our first episode of Hashtag Let's Get Awkward. That was my story. There will be new episodes on every Sunday. They will be about 30 minutes long, because that's all I can afford at the moment. So, and I will see about starting fundraisers for my 
podcast but I'll see how it goes first so thank you for listening I am Billy No Mates and I hope you all have a good night